G'day, I'm Neil, and my handle is Wiley11. Um, I'm just going to put my disclaimer here. Uh, whatever I do and say on these videos is well-intentioned and well-meaning advice. Uh, I accept no liabilities whatsoever for any disclosures. If you take some advice or act on something that I'm saying on these videos, you do so entirely at your own risk. Um, you know, I'm doing it based on my experience. These videos are my attempt to give back to YouTube for the help and assistance that YouTube has given me. So once again, you follow along or follow advice from these videos entirely at your own risk. Okay, and if you're not happy to do that, click this off and off you go. Because this is purely my attempt to give back to YouTube uh, as I said, for the help and advice that I have received out of YouTube. So this is just my little attempt to give back. If you're happy to follow along at your own risk, uh, buckle up, sit in. Uh, let's get into it. Right, so the problem is that there was no grease on there, no lubricant. So now there's, yay, grease on it. I just put a little dab just on the end of each one of the feet of those. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this beautiful product here, right, which lubricates and cleans and prevents rust. Three in one oil. And that's what I'm using to polish up the mahogany. <laughs> the mahogany. It's actually, I think, a bamboo violin. But anyway, we're going to polish it up with that. So what I'm doing, I'm just going to turn this around. Maybe you'll be able to see what I'm doing. Who knows. I'm a horrible camera person. But what I'm doing is I'm grabbing the 3 in one oil. Giving a squirt on the violin directly. It's oil. Right? Can't hurt wood. Wood loves oil. And I'm just rubbing it in with a circular motion around the whole of the carcass of the violin. Just applying it with my finger, oiling up the wood. I'll tell you what, probably the best thing for it. Look at it. See if I can get you guys a look at this. It's beautiful, huh? It's coming up nice. I'm doing these ones with it, just with my finger, just lightly rubbing it across the surface of the violin. I'm gonna give it two or three coats, let it dry, let it get nice and dry, and go again. I'll keep going. As you can see, I want to do the top first. Right -o. So, just quickly, um, I was showing you oiling up the violin. Um, unfortunately, that um, that failed. Uh, the reason is that there was too much pitting on, on the surface of the violin where the biro stabbing marks were coming through and um, there were, there's still a lot of damage that just didn't disappear. I thought I could rub it um, and rub some beeswax into those holes and it would look good but unfortunately it looks as though someone's attacked it with an ice pick or something which they probably have. Uh, so I've made the decision to sand it back. So the next series of videos will be me sanding back the violin and we're going to put some proper wax in there um, and we're going to go through that process with proper wax. All right, so see you at the next one. Right, so what I'm doing here is I've started the sanding exercise. Uh, you can see here I've got some tissue paper which I put over this block of wood 
and I'm rubbing it extremely lightly over the surface of the violin to bring it back to the bamboo. So what I don't want to do is I don't want to take too much material off. So I'm going extremely gently, uh, using a lot of effort and strokes, and I'm going very gingerly right over the till I get all of this lacquer and all of this um, all of this off. And you can see here all the biromark damage that he's done, all the damage with the with the fine tuning adjusters up here. You can see more damage that's been done. You know, it's it's just a mess, and, and it needs to be done very very gingerly. So I'm using an 80 grit. I'm going to go from an 80 grit to get the um, all of the lacquer and all of the um, stone off uh, down to a 240 grit to rub in the wax. And I'm going to be using a wax, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, and once I've waxed it, uh, I'll rub it back with the 240 grit. So here I'm out on the balcony doing this because there's a lovely breeze blowing. I can sit with my back to the breeze and all of the dust flies away from me. I don't have to worry about breathing in all the lacquer and stuff. It's just being taken away from where I'm working. So it's well ventilated and I'm not worried about breathing in any of the dust, which isn't happening. So here you can see after I've gone at it a bit longer, you can see all I'm doing I, I, as soon as I see any bamboo, I, I move on to another part, right? And just take, taking away all of the lacquer. So you can see the area where I'm working. I'm out on the balcony, very well ventilated, and I'm not worried at all about any problems with uh, breathing in the dust. Right. Hi, folks. I'm going to talk real briefly about Project Violin. Now what we've started to do, we've got 80 grit sandpaper and we've started to rub it back. We want to get through all of this varnish, which is really high quality varnish. Actually, I've done, the Chinese have done a pretty good job. I've got to rub it off all the sides. I'm not going to do the top of the violin because you can see that's actually a darker, richer colour than the base. All right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stain up the base only. Now, I'm going to debate as to whether I bring it into here or not. I don't think I'm going to. Um, I'm not removing this, even though I noticed it's got some play in it. Right? So it, there's a little bit of play in, in this, which means that the kid that had it has obviously tweaked it and done his best to break it. Whoever owned this before us, they, they didn't respect it. They drew all over it with crayon, but they did worse than that. And I've got the marks out now here. I've got it back to beautiful, smooth thing. But they had a pot. They had to go at it with a biro and scratch things into it with a biro. And then they had crayon. There were bits of crayon stuffed in here. Uh, it was missing. I actually got it like that. That was all I had of the violin when I bought it. It, it didn't have... It didn't have the chin rest, it didn't have any of the bits, no strings, no nothing. It had a bow, but the bow was crap, and I had to get it, uh, the horsehair bit for the bow sorted. Um, but yeah, this is this is coming together nice. What I'm doing is I'm rubbing it back with 80 grit. I'm taking all of the varnish. I'm not going through to the, this is bamboo. If you didn't know, the Chinese make lots of stuff out of bamboo. This is bamboo. And I'm rubbing the varnish back. And I don't want to break through into this. Right? I just I just want to take back the varnish. So you can see here, this is where they over tightened the fine tuners and the um, the bottom of the fine tuner, the metal things, the metal pins at the bottom were actually into the wood. You're not supposed to over tighten them to the point where they're piercing the wood. Right, now what I'm doing there is I'm going to push that out with some wax. Right, so I've got some wax to rub into this. At the moment it's full of sawdust, fine sawdust. And what I'm doing is I'm just going real easy, real light, 
with sandpaper on a block. I'm not using my fingers because I, I want it to be a nice even rub. And I'm using a, a block with um, some tissue paper under the block. So it's just a block of wood with tissue paper, which is giving me a nice even contact. And as you can see, there have been high spots and low spots, right? And what we're doing by rubbing it with tissue paper is we're taking all of these high spots out of it. We're going to have a nice smooth finish with the 80 grit. And I'm going to come back at it with 240 grit. And then I've got some 1000 grit. Um, so I'm going to have three goes at it. So this is the 80 grit. I'm taking it down with the 80 grit. I'll take all this varnish off it. I'll do the same on the back, which I haven't started yet. I'll take all this varnish off. And then I'll do what I can do on this side. So I'm not sure if I even want to touch the sides, to be honest. I think I've got it now that I've started. I, I, I'm committed. So I've got to go around all these sides. She's going to... She's going to see, even in here, look, he's got some crap in here. I didn't even see that. He's got some crap going on in here. Yeah, he's got some more crap going on. No, I've got to do the sides. Um, what I'm going to do with that is rub it right back. I'll make a decision about whether I remove that and re-glue it. Because with that off, it'll be easier to rub back. Um, I can get up under there with the sandpaper a lot easier. You know, with that gone. But if I take it off, then I've got to make the decision to put it back on as well. And you've got to go real easy with it. Um, you know, that's that's a piece of... Well, it's, it's, it's alleging that it's ebony, but I'll guarantee you that's not ebony. That'll be a piece of whatever wood they had hanging around in the backyard. <laughs> it's probably a really good... It could be teak. Who knows? If it is teak, it, it's going to be very, very strong. Teak is extremely strong wood. These will be teak. These will be the same wood. And if it is teak, it'll be fine. We'll be able to remove it. But I'm not sure I want to. I think that for Talia, that's going to be fine. She's, you know, it's got a good enough connection. But that's been wailed on, you know, like pounded on or sat on or whatever. Because you can feel it's got just the, the most minute little, like less than one thou play in it. Less than that. And it might be, it's, and it is, it's right here at the end. Right here. I can even see it moving. Right there at the end. And I could probably fix that with a bit of glue. Just drop a bit of, you know, just force it with a bit of glue. Clamp it down and leave it sit and go off and that, that'll be fine. And I think that's what I'm going to do with it. I don't want to tempt too much fate. If I bust through anything, you know, that's it all over. Because I've got no way of repairing it if I bust through a, a panel. The back's not too bad. I don't know for what reason. I, I, I was able to get all the crayon off of it. And it's not too bad. But what I'm saying is that you, you can you can give something some love. I don't want to put some mahogany finish on this. And then have the back like that, you know. I want the mahogany finish to be on the whole of the of the box, and I'm happier with this because this is a deeper this is a deeper finish, as you can see, and that's more the colour I want it to be, the darker colour. Geez, I tell you what, he's even done some shit in there, hasn't he? Those pegs are terrible. I'm going to pull. I'm going to pull the pegs. They're really terrible. Oh, no wonder. <laughs> There's been bits of crayon in the peg holes. Bits of crayon. They've been out at some stage and someone's put some crayon through them. Unbelievable. How do you get crayon in here? <laughs> I think you're meant to put a resin or something in there, you know, to so that they, when you put them in. I 
I'm glad I had this on thing because I didn't take note of which was in and which was not in. They're tapered. I can see when you look through, they're tapered. So that's a tapered thing. They were probably in backwards. Well, there's the pegs for that. A little bit of crayon on it. <laughs> it might be resin. I don't know. I don't know what you put in the pegs. I would assume you put some kind of a grease in there, Vaseline or something. You know. Uh, we'll find out one day. Yeah, they only go in one way, don't they? Because you can see once, like that hole there is, is bigger in diameter than that hole. This hole is bigger in diameter than that. And I reckon that was in backwards. Because I can see the inner diameter there. Rightio, enough said. We're going to fix it. We're going to keep into it. Um, one thing you've got to be very careful of is moisture. You don't want any moisture getting into this bamboo, right? You, you want to keep it dry. And because we had a bunch of rain and my workshop's out there on the balcony, um, I sand it out there on the balcony because I get a breeze and I can sit with my back to the breeze. And as I'm sanding, I can sand and the wind takes care of all the dust that goes in that direction. It do, I'm not breathing it, right? So I don't have to worry too much about the dust that's coming off the off the bile in. And I can hold it there and I can sand nice and gently. And the, the wind just blows all the dust off and onto the onto the side of the balcony. But because it's rained, it's quite it's quite humid and moist and damp. So you don't want any of that moisture getting into your bamboo. Um, so what you need to do is you need to wait a day or two until it dries out again and you go from there that's me mate right so really quickly i'm just going to take you through i spent 30 dollars at the hardware and i've bought this uh wood wax in a mahogany finish right which is going to go down into those holes and then I'm going to sort of rub it through and into the grain as well. So hopefully it will get absorbed somewhat into everything. I've also bought a mahogany stain. Gee, it's very shiny, isn't it? Let's see if I can. Hey! I can't stop the glare, the white glare. All right. Uh, Anyway, this is a mahogany stain um, that goes with this wax, right? So, and then to finish everything off, I've just bought an aerosol matte, sorry, a satin finish, clear um, aerosol, a clear coat. So once this, the stain's on, I'm going to be spray painting the clear coat on. And giving it a, a protective coat with the clear coat so that's the plan the plan is is to give it some love really gingerly rub all that stuff back stain it back in the mahogany clear coat it assemble it give it to Tatum and hopefully she'll she'll want it if she doesn't want it I'll find someone else in the family who does want it and who will look after it and love it okay but they have to promise that they're going to maintain it and look after it and pass it on to somebody when they're finished with it who will do the same it'll get looked after and cared for in our, fa our family and played for years to come i hope that's my hope rightio so onwards and upwards um the next uh, the next video will be me sanding back the violin uh, you know and hopefully take having removed all of that um, all of that lacquer and all of that stain with just the bamboo showing uh, ready to do the wax and the sand back of the wax morning welcome back e 35 cent coffee I'm going to start this uh, this violin uh, video by saying how much I feel for the people in Florida this morning 
That was shocking news we all woke up to. Mass shooting in Florida. The world's gone mad. I said a quick thing about it today. Um, I don't know whether I'll post it or not. I had some choice things to say about it. The fact is, it, it just should never happen. Okay. Today we're, gonna, we're working on Project Violin. When I last left you, I started to take the varnish off this. You can see here all, all of this scuffing that came about as a result of the fine tuning uh, pegs being wound too deeply and scuffing into the into the surface of the violin. But apart from that, there were residual crayon marks all over it. There were all sorts of problems with it. And what I've been doing is I've been rubbing this back with 80 grit sandpaper. Just now, when I'm rubbing it, I'm going very gingerly. I'm, I'm only going very lightly. I don't want to take any of this bamboo off. I just want to rub it back to the point where the varnish and the, the stain has gone, right? So I am taking a couple of thou off, off, I guess, because I'm taking this stain out. And I'm going to restain it because whatever they put on, like he spilled water and crayon and, and he scratched it and he put a ballpoint pen through here and you know this was just abused completely abused this this little violin and it deserves some love you know i'm, I'm going to offer it to my niece talia right if she if she wants to start playing um she can have this one but she's got to promise me she's going to love it as much as i but it deserves to be played it deserves to be loved it's been abused and and i'm trying to give it some love you can see here i've got this back to the bamboo and that's where i'm going to take this whole top surface back to see i don't know for what reason they didn't touch the back of the violin but there are some scratches some dings yeah, they don't come up very well but it's been sort of smashed on the ground and, and, and there's chips and dings in, in, in it, right? All over the place, there's scratches. So I'm going to bring it all back, take take it right back to the, the bamboo. I'll get around the sides. I'm not going to do the neck. The neck seems to have survived pretty well. And I'm going to stain it back up and refinish it, you know. So even this, I've noticed this has got a little bit of play in it. And I've got to get some advice on whether it, I'll need to re-glue it. It's, it's actually come apart right here at the edge, at the very edge here. Okay. So there's a very, very minute amount of play in it. Um, it might be all right because when you, when you depress it, you know, you can still depress it fine. I, I just don't know whether that pulls in, you know, with, with the strings. I'm, I'm pretty sure that'll pull up okay. So I, I don't want to mess with this too much. But I do want to get all this varnish off, all this rubbish that, that, that's gone on with this poor thing. Bring it right back. I might mask this off. Give this a clean up and mask it off. So just to make sure that it doesn't get anything into it, which doesn't need to be into it. So we've got all the pieces. We ordered all the all the pieces for this on eBay. I've made the decision that I'm going to send it back to the to the thing, restain it, and, and reseal it, and uh, give it to Talia. And uh, you know, on the basis that she's she's got to promise me she's going to look after it and learn to play it correctly. Excuse me. Now, if you're following along on all these videos, this is Project Violin. Um, I've already shot one video on it. Mm, I've got bits of breakfast stuck in my teeth. <laughs> I have to go brush my teeth. Um, 
I, I really feel for the people in Florida. Um, you know, you, you, there's just no words describing this madness. There's just none. Uh, there's no amount of giving back to society, you know, that, or no amount of talking uh, once the deed's done. Before the deed's done, there's plenty of talking, you know, that can be done. Special place in hell reserved from anybody that profited from those guns. Special place in hell. There you go. That's my comment. If you sold those guns to those people, you're just as guilty. You really are. You don't say, oh, I didn't know what they were going to use them for. All right? Doesn't matter. You know you sold those guns to people that, that weren't reputable. All right? You can't tell me that, that you know, you, you, all you were interested in was the, the money to feed your family from the guns. Or even worse, maybe you got more money than you need. All right? There's a lot of money in selling guns. Guns and whiskey. Been going on for centuries. And, um, you know. From where, from where does this all, like, it's all greed, it's all rubbish. Is this? Yeah, enough said. I feel for the people in Florida, Florida, uh, Florida. I really feel for the people in Florida. Uh, my condolences to you and yours. It, it was undeserving. No, no, nobody deserves that. And, uh, you know, special place in hell reserved for those people. Special place. Right. Let's get on with Project Violin. Okay.